We have a massive update in the case of whistleblower and WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. A lawsuit by four American journalists and Assange allies against the CIA advanced in federal court on Tuesday after a federal judge threw out an appeal by the agency to toss the case. As Politico reported, Manhattan-based U.S. District Court judge ruled the four Americans who visited Assange while he was holed up at the Ecuadorian embassy in London several years ago can proceed with their suit over allegations that the CIA stole data copied from their phones during those visits. Now, you might recall that Assange entered the Ecuadorian embassy in London back in 2012 and was given asylum while the Swedish government tried to extradite him on a rape investigation. It was Sweden's longest-running preliminary investigation ever, and police eventually dropped the probe without filing any charges. Now, a separate U.S. effort to extradite him is still ongoing. And that extradition might be coming sooner rather than later. Human rights lawyer and wife to Julian Stella Assange shared that, quote, the public hearing for the WikiLeaks founders extradition before the UK High Court will be on February 20th, 2024. It may be the final chance for the UK to stop Julian's extradition. It's now or never. Joining us now to discuss the story is film producer at Shipton House and brother to Julian Assange, Gabriel Shipton. Welcome back to the show. Yeah, good to be with you, Brianna and Robbie. It's, it's always such a pleasure to have you here. For folks who aren't as familiar with the contours of the CIA case, can you explain a little bit um, who were the four visitors and the extent of the privacy invasion that happened? Well, uh, the four visitors uh, were um, two, two lawyers, two of Julian's lawyers from the United States. Uh, Margaret Kunstler is, is one of them. Uh, and two um, journalists. Uh, uh, John Goetz is uh, one of the journalists. He's a, uh, or they're all American citizens, uh, and they're all, uh, you know, suing the CIA or and Mike Pompeo actually for breaching their Fourth Amendment rights. And what what actually happened when you went to visit Julian in the embassy uh, after 2017, when when the security company that was supposed to be protecting him was co-opted by the CIA and started surveilling him was that uh, you had to hand over your phone, uh, your passport, uh, um, any other identity that you had. And, you know, it was you were told it was for security reasons. But what was actually happening was the security company uh, was opening your passport, uh, taking photos of your passport, opening up your phone, uh, taking photos of what's inside your phone, your IMA number which is unique to each uh, device, and even uh, you know, examining the contents of your phone or other electronic devices uh, that, that were left there at the front desk. Now, that information was then passed back to uh, the CIA through this UC Global security company. Uh, and that was uh, revealed uh, through a huge investigation uh, that Yahoo News did actually uh, back in September 2021, when they uh, uh, cited 30 sources, current and former uh, intelligence sources who were close uh, to the Pompeo CIA and the Trump White House, um, outlining um, this, uh, this you know, clandestine operation that was hand happening in the middle of London. Uh, it wasn't only these um, journalists and lawyers who were being spied upon, but it was also Julian. Uh, his meetings with his doctors were recorded on camera. Uh, and and uh, microphone, uh, you know, they had the whole place bugged, essentially. It was a CIA black site running in the middle of London. Hmm. Incredible. Uh, so tell us more about the legal effort. So this is a lawsuit you know, by, the, by the American citizens um, who, were, who were treated this way. Um, you know, what, this gets into what sort of protections all of us have against this kind of spying by our government, you know, which we, I think, all believe ought to be stronger, and it's a shame that they're not. But you know, what chance do they have of prevailing here? Well, the the judgment uh, has now said that the proceedings can go ahead. There was a motion to dismiss uh, from uh, the CIA and Mike Pompeo, and the judge has said, well, we can go ahead um, based on the electronic devices and whether those electronic devices uh, were compromised and whether the data within them uh, was kept and uh, sent back to the CIA. And I think this will be very, uh, very, very revealing. Uh, you know, a lot should come out in court uh, during these proceedings uh, that, that will affect Julian's case as well, but also 
uh, you know, the Amer American citizens who uh, seem to be these days more and more uh, spied on, um, you know, freedom of speech has been curtailed uh, all over the place, whether it's uh, social media or the national security style investigative reporting that Julian was uh, involved in. So this, uh, you know, what's happened to Julian and, and the people around him and these journalists uh, is just it's just growing and growing. It's becoming this huge, huge scandal, uh, a scandal for the Trump administration, but now a scandal for the Biden administration as they continue to pursue uh, Julian with this unprecedented Espionage Act prosecution. Gabriel, what can we expect of this uh, final uh, hearing on February 20th of next year? Well, this is the, uh, you know, this sort of end of the road uh, for Julian in the UK uh, court uh, system. He has uh, been waiting for this hearing uh, since they submitted their appeal application uh, back in July 22. Uh, so he's been waiting, <laughs> it'll be almost two years um, since, uh, since they submitted their application until this hearing. Uh, now, uh, during this hearing, it will be a two day hearing uh, where uh, some high court, two high court judges who we don't know who they are yet, uh, will hear the appeal points and decide whether to give Julian leave to appeal, um, as in, you know, set a further date for to have a full appeal hearing on these appeal points, or whether they will uh, reject, uh, reject the appeal application and order Julian's extradition. So really, it, it could potentially be the end of the road for Julian uh, in the UK legal system. Uh, if those judges turn around and reject that application, uh, then he could be extradited within uh, 24 hours. He still has an opportunity to apply to the ECHR, but we know that the uh, Home Secretary has already um, started looking at ways uh, how to get Julian extradited as quickly as possible uh, if, this, uh, if this application is rejected. Do we have any update on his physical health, his, his state? I know we, you've kept us informed when we've previously had you on, um, on how he's, you know, literally physically doing. Yeah, look, uh, Robbie, he's hanging in there, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's in such a or ordeal for us. Now, this will be his fifth, fifth, fifth Christmas uh, inside a maximum security uh, prison, uh, not charged with any, uh, not convicted of any crime, uh, solely fighting this extradition. Um, you know, I'm always amazed by, you know, his resilience and his fighting spirit. But over time, he is getting worn down and, and he is in a very delicate position health wise, uh, you know, both mentally and, and physically. And, and that's why it's so important that, you know, we get him out of prison and uh, before it's too late, uh, before he sort of succumbs to this whole process and before he's extradited to the United States. I'm curious if there's anything that's changed in terms of the legal arguments, the sympathies of the judges uh, that are involved, the weight and force of public opinion and whether that's shifted over the years that leads you to be hopeful about there being a different outcome here or whether you think the appeal is going to be unsuccessful? Well, I think what's what's hopeful is that we get another another few months to keep uh, the political campaign um, going to keep that momentum that we've uh, seen um, developing in the United States, particularly in the Congress, um, you know, after the bipartisan letter led by uh, Congressman McGovern and, and Rep Massey uh, that, that was released in October, there is now a bipartisan resolution that's um, been led by Paul Gosar, Republican Paul Gosar, uh, that also has uh, Rep McGovern on that one too, and as well as eight or nine others. Uh, so there is a sort of growing movement uh, in the political uh, class within within uh, within the United States who are who are, I guess, you know, gaining more courage to speak out about this uh, prosecution. Uh, in terms of the the legal landscape in the United Kingdom, uh, there are some uh, some positive signs around a decision uh, regarding. Uh, regarding um, sending asylum seekers to Rwanda. That was a Supreme Court decision uh, that, that, could affect, uh, that could affect Julian's um, appeal, but it's, uh, we're not too sure about that at the moment. But the, real, the, political and the political campaign and the grassroots campaign has built incredible momentum. 
and uh, we, 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 we will continue to see that as well as the Australian government who will continue to make representations on Julian's behalf, as well as um, you know, behind the scenes uh, diplomatic efforts uh, by the Australian government that we hope uh, will lead to his release. Mm -hmm. Gabriel Shipton, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you both.